I would like to tell you a little bit about how we integrate ray tracing and, and basically give you a high level five minute overview of, of the usual process. You will probably start by extending your graphics API abstraction layer with some new ray tracing shader types and ray tracing commands to build acceleration structures and to do ray tracing dispatch commands in command queues. Uh, you will have to somehow figure out uh, how to build an, uh, all the ray tracing acceleration structures for all the geometry in your scene and also how to update this uh, in real time um, whenever uh, geometry forms or when objects move. You will also have to create some new shader types and, and new shaders for, for regeneration and also hit shaders. And you will have to then combine them into a ray tracing pipeline state object. And then you have to update shader parameters as things change in the scene for every object. And once you have all of that done, that's where the fun begins because then you can start experimenting with all these ray tracing techniques. So uh, in a little more detail, um, hope you, hope Second time, yeah. yeah. Well, you will, uh, for building and updating the acceleration structure, um, you should usually just build once for static geometry, but every frame uh, you will typically be rebuilding the entire top level acceleration structure. Uh, I haven't mentioned this, but the API supports what we call a two level acceleration structure uh, where the top level has instances pointing to bottom level acceleration structures. So most of the bottom level ones for static geometry are built ones. But for deformable geometry like skin meshes, you will have to update those every frame. And the way to do that is you, you, typically you will run a compute shader to write the results of a skin end or any deformation into a buffer that you can provide as input to the uh, update acceleration structure command. Then you have to create these new shader types uh, that we mentioned. Um, now, there's a lot of shader code that you've already written in your engine to do shading. Uh, a lot of it, especially if you have a forward shader, uh, is quite useful and you should be able to reuse it. Now, uh, to enable us to do that uh, easily in, a, in an engine as complex as you forward, there are thousands of shaders. Uh, we use an approach that combines the vertex shader and the pixel shader code to, and automatically generates a hit shader using an extension to Microsoft's DirectX compiler. And this allows us also to generate automatically any hit shaders that just compute the alpha test result. You have, once you have all the shaders, you, you have to register them in some way and create a retracing pipeline state object. And finally, every frame you will have to update shader parameters. The naive approach, which is what we do right now, is to just update the shader parameters every frame for every object. Uh, longer term, we expect that the optimal approach will, uh, will actually be more practical and, and for much faster in terms of CPU overhead. And, it, and that approach is to just update what changes every frame. And that will allow us to support really huge scenes that are really not possible in any other way today. Finally, once you've done all of this, you can start experimenting, as I said. So you can start replacing passes for shadow maps or ambient occlusion with and reflections with ray, generation, ray tracing based ones and denoising. And then you can add all the techniques like the path tracing and the light map baking approaches that we just showed, for example. Three optimization tips, uh, just so you, that's an anecdote, if you will, because there are definitely a lot of things that you will have to think about. But first, uh, one approach that we mentioned in the talk with Epic earlier today, we use simplified materials for retracing heat shading in reflections. Second, just build one bottom level acceleration structure when you have an object that has a lot of materials interleaving in space. That's more efficient than building separate ones. We used to do that before then, we optimize it. And finally, uh, for shadows and IO, you can use this flag, I'm not gonna read it, but basically it returns the first hit. Uh, rather than find the, the closest hidden island array. That, allow, that will not get you always a correct hit distance along the array, but it's usually good enough and, uh, for our, in our experience for shadows on AO, and it's faster. So, all right, I think that's almost done. Uh, there are a few challenges that we haven't fully tackled yet, We've, uh, that, but we believe there are solutions for them. And here are some of them. One is decals. We have a prototype outside of the engine that is very promising, and we would like to integrate that eventually. Tessellation, uh, it's disabled in our current prototype. It's something that we require somehow streaming out or writing out the output of the tessellator 
into mem memory buffer, we can provide to the acceleration instructor builder as input, and it will probably requ require a lower update rate than, than the tessellation pipeline handles today in raster. And finally, texture LOD, which is really important if you're tracing primary rays, where it's really visible if you don't use proper texture LOD. But it's not as critical if you're doing glossy reflections or if you're doing shadows or, or AO. Uh, so we've experimented with a few approaches for this. We don't, uh, we don't think they are always worth it. They are some overhead. Um, but th there's definitely a lot of uh, ideas uh, that, to make that better and faster. So uh, in our experience for reflections, temporal anti-aliasing uh, gets you a, a, a very far. And, and we, we do not apply any texture LOD. And just to wrap up, uh, I just want to give you the take, takeaways for this talk. Uh, I would like you to remember that with uh, RTX and, and DirectX ray tracing, we're bringing real-time ray tracing to developers today. I think, I believe this is the biggest change in, in graphics API since programmable shading was introduced. So uh, I think we should be happy that, that things are finally evolving again. Um, a few rays per pixel are possible today, and especially for the lighter weight effects like shadows and AO that do less shading. More expensive uh, approaches like path tracing are still really useful for content creation workflow improvements and to help you guide your techniques. We showed a few examples of what's possible, but this is just the beginning. I expect you guys will be showing me next year what you can do with it. And I hope overall this was inspiring and as exciting as it is for us. So thank you for coming.